everybody. Uh, we were just we were just talking in the studio. Uh, welcome to October or November. It's November. It was just October. Um, I I remember the order of the months because that's what they taught me in kindergarten. Uh, and the letters, uh, and the numbers up to 100. Although apparently I would frequently skip the ones from 90 to 100. I would just go from 89 to 100. And then the teacher would be like, did you forget something? And then I would do 90 to 99 after 100. That's not the order they come in. I figured it out since then. I've gotten better. Like I know how numbers work, I guess is my big point. Um, uh, it's it, like I said, it's November. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight, uh, which is amazing because like an hour ago I had nothing to talk about tonight, and then I was like, well, let me just write some some stuff on paper, and here we are. Um, first off, I'm going to start with this. It's not my first page. Uh, foot follow up. Um, as you may recall, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, I'm getting old, uh, and my body's decided to stop cooperating with me. Um, and I have I have I have multiple pieces of evidence for this. Like when I get up in the morning, I make, after I put my feet in the floor, I make oof noises as I slide down and put the weight on my body. Uh, and then I kind of shamble downstairs and I drink a cup of coffee that I've set up to go off the night before. Because I don't set it off to go off the night before. By the time I get downstairs, I'm out of energy and have to sit on the couch for a couple minutes before I can go in and make coffee in order to get energy. It's sad, people. Do not, do not age. Uh, all you frickin' 20 and 30 year olds don't know how good you have it. I mean, except for the student loans. I agree, that part's terrible. But other than that, 20 and 30 year olds, you're doing great. Uh, but foot follow up, uh, as I mentioned before back in January, I've been trying to run, uh, and I've been trying to run because running counts as exercise, uh, but it's exercise that doesn't happen in a gym where people judge you. Instead, it happens outside. Uh, where people just pity you like you're you're running down the street and you'll you'll run past a nice couple pushing their baby in a carriage and then you can see them stare at you and go oh that poor sad pathetic man who is trying to regain his youth by walking quickly down the street which is essentially the equivalent to what I'm doing or and just sweating just sweating and uh, and it, it do not, people, do not run if you, if you have any other option, do not run. I have no other options. Like if I go to a gym, uh, I wave my little badgy thingy over it, uh, and then the little computer screen is like, uh, you can take these four classes, don't go near the weights area, you don't want to embarrass yourself, is what, it, is what the screen says to me. Um, anyway, so I was jogging. I've been jogging for a while. Uh, I'd hoped to run a marathon this year, didn't happen. Uh, why didn't it happen? Because uh, just in January, for no reason, I went out jogging, and then I got home, my foot hurt a little. And I thought, well, that's unfortunate, and so I put, like, a little ice on it. And, like, the next day, my foot still hurt, and I was like, well, I guess I'm old. It'll get better. And then, like, three or four days later, it still hurt, so I went to the doctor, and then the doctor said, where does it hurt? And then, I, and then she did, like, the most minimal exam possible, and then she said, you have plantar fasciitis, and I said... I, I thought I'd broken a bone. And she's like, no, if you'd broken a bone, it would hurt when I did this. And then she pushed on me. And it didn't hurt. So medical school, good for you. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's better. Because I figure broken bone, they're going to put me in a cast. It's going to suck. Plantar fasciitis, not broken. What do we do? And she's like, well, not a lot we can do. Uh, I'm going to give you this piece of paper, a couple pieces of paper, really, with a staple in the corner, some exercises. Um, you're going to want to... Do these stretches, uh, ice, ice it some, that helps. Uh, you got a little vibrating thing, you can kind of vibrate it, maybe that'll help. And it usually clears up on its own within like four or six months. And I'm like, really? I didn't say really, because she's, she's a doctor, she's smart, she has no reason to lie to me. Uh, in my head, I'm like, well, and I'm like, well, clearly this will go away quickly, because I, I need to be jogging. To, to get healthy, uh, it didn't go away. So like for the first half of the year, just my foot hurt all the time. And I'd be limping around and people would go like, are you okay? And I'd be like, no, I'm old. And my foot hurts. And they'd be like, what is it? And I'd be plantar fasciitis. Like, what do you do about it? I'm like, you don't do anything. Like medical science has given up on this disease. Uh, they're off trying to cure cancer because there's a national cancer society, but there's no 
National Plantar Fasciitis Society. They don't, they don't care. It's just, it's your foot hurts. Get used to it. Life is pain. Life is pain, people, is what they want me to think. Um, so just, it kept not getting better, and I kept stretching it, and I did these little stand on a stair and stretch, and these little pull on your foot and stretch, and I had, I had this little vibrator, and I just, just hammered in there, and it would feel better for a little while, and I took the painkillers. Uh, and eventually, remember she'd said it'll go away in like four to six months, uh, so I waited eight months, because uh, I'm a guy, and that's what guys do. They're like, well, I don't like going to doctors, so I'm not, and then eventually I was like, well, I'm going back because my foot still hurts. And then she's like, well, we could try giving you a steroid injection. I'm like, does it work? She's like, well, it usually works. I'm like, that, it would have been great for the other doctor who told me back in January. I mean, I think she briefly mentioned it, but she did not follow that brief mention with comma, and it usually works, because uh, I would have remembered that. Um, and then I'm like, well, what's the, what's the downside? And she's like, well, there's no real downside. Sometimes it just doesn't work. And I'm like, well, that's, that's everything. I mean, it either works or it doesn't work. There's no downside. Why, why didn't I do this in February? And she's like, well, usually we like to wait a little while to see if it gets better. And I'm like, not me. I'm a, I'm a now, now, now kind of guy. I mean, if I, knowing what I know now, if I can order a syringe full of steroids from Amazon, I will put it in my running pad. So that if I am out jogging around and my foot starts to hurt, I'm just going to just, I mean, that'll, that's, that's probably not good. That's probably not good. Like if the, if you're stopped by a police officer and you have a syringe full of steroids, they are, they're, they're going to take you to county is a guess. It's just a guess. I mean, I, I could ask, I could ask if they would take you to county or not, but, uh, Anyway, so I, did, I finally went in, I saw the doctor, and she sprayed some cold stuff on my foot. Uh, and then she took a very large needle and stuck it in my foot. Uh, yeah. And I watched it. I watched the whole thing. Because uh, that's what I do now. Like, I used to be terrified of needles. Uh, and for years and years and years, I would avoid anything to do with needles. Like, I was like, well, I mean, sure, polio's bad. But, I mean... It's, it's a needle for a vaccine. I mean, I, I could maybe avoid polio. You know, I did. I can trace it all back, actually, to uh, when I was in fifth grade. We had a textbook, a uh, health textbook for my little fifth grade health class, whatever it was. Uh, and one of the pages in the textbook, they were talking about the, the epidemics and stuff. And I believe in, on the left side of the page, I can still see this clearly to this day in, in my head, uh, there was a picture of a girl getting a polio vaccination. So there was a, it was like an arm and a needle going into the arm. And weirdly, like that was the page that the book would just flip open to for no reason whatsoever. Like if you set the book down and just let it go, it'd flip open, there'd be a needle stuck in a girl. That scarred me. That scarred me for a long time. Uh, so I didn't like needles. And then eventually I was like, this is crazy. You got to get over this. Uh, so I started giving blood. I stopped hitting needles. And now someone's going to stick a huge needle in my foot. I'm going to watch it the whole time because uh, that's how that's what you do. You watch it. So she sprayed some cold stuff. She stuck a needle in my foot, squirt some little steroid. She'd move the needle around a little squirt, 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 squirt. And like two hours later, my foot stopped hurting. It hasn't hurt since. So woo medical science. Uh, and not an actual recommendation, kids, uh, but uh, order a syringe full of steroids from Amazon. Uh, me. You'd, you'd, you'd want the cold spray, too. I think the cold spray helped, so we'd, we'd want that. Um, uh, so there's that. Uh, as part of that, I mean, I mentioned my, my goal had been uh, to run a marathon before I, while I was 50. Uh, I'm not 50 anymore. Now I'm 51. I turned 51 in July. So that, that's off the bucket. That's off the list for, for that year. I might still try and do it by next year. I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, but I did, I did run a half marathon like three weeks after the, the, the foot injecty thingy. Uh, that's one of the things that made me go in because I was like, well, I'm, I've already paid 100 bucks to run 13 miles. Uh, and because my foot hurts, I've really run maybe 20 miles all summer. 
put together a bunch of short little runs after which my foot hurt. Maybe I should go see someone. And then I went and saw her, and then she fixed my foot. Genius. Uh, and then three weeks later, with terribly little preparation, uh, I showed up in downtown San Jose at, like, dawn o'clock. Um, and then I, I ran the 13-mile half marathon, uh, just like I did a year ago. Uh, and surprisingly, uh, I was only two minutes slower than last year, which I'm told is wow. good. Uh, but also, I run slow. So, like, I... I've looked at the statistics after I do these little runs, and like I, I feel good because I'm like, well, you're like 60th percentile, and I'm like, well, hey, that's that's not bad, uh, and then I'm like, and then let's let's look at dudes 50 to 59, and then it's like, oh, you're 85th percentile, so it's there's lots of people slower than me, but they're probably really old, I guess is my thought, uh, or something. Uh, another fun thing about this half marathon, uh, as you know, California passed, I can't remember the number, whatever the little weed thing was last year. Uh, so for this half marathon, I took my little tincture with me. And then just before the race, I took the tincture with the, with the CBD in it to help with the inflammation because, you know, pavement things. And it had some other stuff. And like for like the first hour of the race, nothing. And then all of a sudden, I was jogging down one street, and I was like, well, now it kicked in. And then for like four minutes, I was like, well, this is interesting. And then it was gone. So that was it. I had like four minutes of, of happiness uh, with like an, an hour of miserable jogging, and then another hour and 20 minutes of miserable jogging, because that's jogging is miserable. I don't know any. I don't know why people do it voluntarily. Uh, I assume every single person that jogs d is forcing themselves uh, with amazing. Uh, so that's that. That that was the whole. Jo that was just supposed to be a tiny little thing at the start of the show. Um, oh look, I have a fidget spinner because uh, I'm a nerd, um, and nerds have fidget spinners these days. Uh, and little kids apparently don't go to school with a fidget spinner. Um, Halloween. We just had Halloween, uh, which was which is my version of a segue. Uh, two big things happened in my life at Halloween. Three big things happened in my life at Halloween. You'll see. You'll see. I didn't get myself in trouble there. Uh, first of all, Halloween. Of course, uh, I remember as a child, uh, I like we would go to. I can't remember what the store was called up at the end of the street. It got replaced with a shop code. It had a name before that. It was the generic department store. And like a couple days before Halloween, my mother and my brother and I would go there. And there would just be like two aisles full of costumes and boxes. And they were all essentially exactly the same box. And all the costumes were these weird little masks that mostly covered your face that had two little eye holes. And then there would be something, some kind of big shirt for your body, maybe with a cape. Uh, and we would buy two of those, one for me, one for my brother. Uh, and then come Halloween, uh, as it got dark, my parents would just put these things on it, and they would push us out the door with a pillowcase. <laughs> and then we would wander around actual dark streets with uh, a mask that blocked 80% of our vision. Uh, and we would, sh we would go from house to house with this pillowcase, and we would say trick or treat, and then they would give us a candy bar, uh, or a lollipop, or, or in a couple houses, which we learned to avoid in later years, an apple. <laughs> who who gives kids an apple? I mean, the, the kid's not going to eat the apple. The kid's going to take the apple home and throw it out. And in in, in one case, uh, if you don't notice the apple, uh, it's just going to lay on the floor in your bedroom in your bag for a couple weeks till you wonder why does your whole room smell of rotting something and filled with fruit flies. Um, I believe in that aside, right? Big bag of candy as a child. Um, occasionally, every, every, the like one or two houses that would give out like a comic book, which I thought was genius. Um, uh, and then in later years, sometimes we'd make our own costumes instead of buy the thing, right? But again, go out at dark, wander around in the dark for a couple hours without parents. Uh, notice I did not say that my mother or father 
walked me from house to house and stood out on the sidewalk. No, no, we were just gone. And then they assumed we knew where we lived and would come back with a bag of candy. Um, and the other thing I remember is they would always check the candy for needles. They were like, we've heard people put needles in candy, so we're going to check all of your candy for needles. Uh, my parents were not needle-finding specialists. Uh, I have later realized, and this is what occurred to me, like before I was born, the parents said, let's make up a story. People put needles in candy. And then when the kids come back with the candy, we will dump their candy in the kitchen table and we'll send them to bed. And then we will pick out the candy we like. <laughs> and we'll put the rest of the candy, maybe half the candy the kid collected, back in the bag. And then when the kid gets up, we will tell him a lot of that candy had needles in it. So we had to, we had to throw that candy away. We had to, we disposed of that candy. That's, that's my assumption of, first of all, why we have a story of people putting needles in candy and why I never seem to have as much candy the morning after Halloween as I did the night when I got home. Um, so Halloween, uh, we moved to California uh, and we bought a house. Um, and then like come Halloween that first year, we're just sitting in our house because we haven't thought of this. And then the doorbell rings uh, and then we're like, oh shit. Uh, and then we found something, we went and gave it. It was the only kid that year, we were lucky. Um, when I was in college, uh, I lived in a house on campus, but like, you just, it was just college students everywhere. Uh, we're sitting in our house, it's Halloween, the doorbell rings, and it's a little person in something, and it says, trick or treat. We had no candy, we didn't know what to do. Uh, so I gave him a can of Jolt Cola. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so after that, after that first year out here with the one child, uh, we started, well, we've got to buy candy, I guess, if we're home, because uh, clearly we, now we are homeowners. We, you give out candy, because uh, that's what you do. Um, and then, like, we would buy a whole bowl full of candy. We would get, like, three people would show up. Uh, and, like, one of them would just be the short guy from the end of the block. Uh, there's pretending to be eight. Um, uh, so that really soured me on Halloween for a while because like and then I would just I would just keep buying smaller and smaller bags of candy uh, and then no matter how small a bag of candy I bought I ended up eating half of it or all of it and if I bought the candy too soon then I ate all of it and then I go buy another bag of candy uh, and then I got a Costco membership and then I started buying the Costco bags of candy uh, and then I gained 25 pounds um, then like four or five years ago we decided we we cannot be we cannot have candy in this house, first of all, because we just eat it. Uh, and secondly, we have no one coming here, and then we <laughs> eat the candy. Uh, so we, we started buying comic books to hand out at Halloween. Because uh, as a child, like if I got a comic book, that was a house I was always going to go to. There was a house like five blocks away that when I was like seven gave me a comic book. And for like the next five years, I would walk over to that house, past blocks of houses that would have given me candy to try to get a comic book. Uh, and they usually gave me a comic book and then they must have moved. Uh, so we buy, we've been buying comic books, uh, but I've been ramping it up. Uh, Cause like we'd go to the comic book store, we buy a hundred comic books for like, I don't know, $4,000. I don't know what we paid for them, they were cheap. Um, and then this year I'm, I'm typey typing on the web and then it's like, hey, you can, you can buy 50 fidget spinners for cheap. And I'm like, deal, deal. <laughs> and then I was like, well, 50? I mean, what if, what if we get a lot of kids this year? I mean, sure, we've, we really only usually get about 12. But what if, so I bought 150 fidget spinners. Because <laughs> I've, I've told this to multiple people this year. And when I say I bought 150 fidget spinners, almost everyone says, and why? And I'm going to tell you, you don't need a why. There's no need for a why. It's just the fact that you can buy 150 fidget spinners for not very much money at all, really, uh, is, is in itself the reason that you do it. Uh, and then this year, we handed out comic books. We handed out fidget spinners. Uh, and they were both huge hits. Uh, like, we would sh we'd like, would you like a fidget spinner? And then all little kids would be like, oh. <gasps> I assume because they've heard of fidget spinners, uh, but they have they've never been allowed to possess one before. 
as like they were unobtainium. Like maybe maybe one kid had a fidget spinner and they would play with it. We just gave them to everyone. Um, uh, so that that was Halloween fidget spinners and comic books. Uh, we also uh, before I found the fidget spinners, I had a different plan for Halloween. Uh, there's another there's a there's a website that was also selling candy corn. Uh, as we know, candy corn. Uh, is possibly the worst candy out there. Uh, that's actually circus peanuts. Circus peanuts, the worst candy. Uh, candy corn, on most people's list at number two. Uh, they were selling big bags of, of candy corn for a dollar. Uh, so I wanted to buy 50 bags of candy corn. Uh, and I tried to buy 50 <laughs> bags of candy corn. They're like, uh, you can only buy 12. Like what? And they're like, well, we'll we're only sell a certain number of the quantity 50, and then we're going to sell a certain number of the quantity 12, and then we're going to sell a certain number of the quantity 6. And I'm like, okay, I'll take a lot of quantity 12s. And they were like, you've, okay. So I got 12 bags of candy corn. Um, <laughs> problem with 12 bags of candy corn is it uh, it it kind of foiled my plan. Uh, my plan when I was going to have 50 bags of candy corn. Uh, they're one pound, two and a half ounces, so they're 14 ounces of pretty much solid corn syrup. Uh, this is enough to make a lot of parents just scream with, uh, like, my child hasn't had that much corn syrup in the last year. Uh, my plan, if I had gotten 50 of these, was every kid that came to my house was getting a bag of candy corn. Like, they would hold their little bag open, and I would just... And then I, then I assumed their little eyes would just be like, it's heaven. Uh, and simultaneously, their parents would be like, what have I done? Uh, that didn't work. That didn't work. Couldn't get 50 bags, only got 12. So instead, we, we put, and here's where I should have estimated quantities, because 12 was still too many. Uh, we just got a huge bowl, and we filled it with candy corn uh, by just opening the bag and pouring it in. Uh, and then we took a ladle, like a big gravy ladle, and we put it in the bowl. And my theory was every kid, I would just ladle out just a huge, just open your mouth, boy. And we just <laughs> dump it in. Uh, open your mouth, boy, didn't work for anyone. Uh, but we would just dump it in their little bag. Uh, and I'm sure when they got home, their parents were like, we want to check your candy for needles. Uh, and then they'd be like, oh, all of this candy corn has needles in it. Every last bit is my assumption of how it worked. But that, that was Halloween for us. Um, now, I said before, we, we, like we'd get four kids or we'd get eight kids sometimes. This year, we had 25 separate children. Well, they weren't separate because they came in a couple groups. 25 distinct children showed up, uh, and we handed them each 40. a fidget spinner. You're being told it's 40. Oh, you're right. It's 40. It's 40. No, no, I was wrong. 40 kids. 25 was last year. This year, 40 probably unique kids. Because I'm. I also, when I was young, one year I did this funny thing where I wore a costume that had a mask. And I would go to the house with the mask on first. And then, like later, I would try to go to the same house with the mask <laughs> off. Um, and they gave me a candy bar each time, but on reflection, I don't. I think. They were smarter than I. They were like, it's that kid again. Just give him a candy bar. Make him go away. And I don't think I was the same person. Uh, here's, uh, we had 40 kids. Uh, they showed up in waves. It was weird, uh, like long periods of nothing. And then 10 kids would show up. Um, so that's Halloween. Uh, the, other, the, the second big thing about Halloween for us uh, is we, uh, for maybe the last 10 years at least, we, we do a big party on the Friday before Halloween, and we invite all of our adult friends, uh, and then we drink, uh, because we can, and we've invited you over, and we have food, uh, and we, we have alcohol, and everyone has a good time. Uh, I have my booze robot set up, so you can tappy-tappy on the screen and put your thing, and it makes you a delightful drink. Um, this year, we make a couple of delightful drinks, and then as I was cleaning up, I realized that the bottle of vodka at the back was empty. Uh, which means sometime during the party we ran out of vodka and stopped putting vodka in the drinks, which I think is why I didn't have as big of a hangover the next morning as I thought I would have, because I knew how many drinks I'd had. But apparently some of those drinks had very little in the way of actual alcohol in them. 
Ah, so that was that. Uh, third thing about Halloween. This is this is why I'm not in trouble because uh, the show's not over. And I said two things and then I corrected to three. Uh, I got married in Halloween three years ago, uh, and then we announced our Halloween party. It was great. Uh, and as a plus side, uh, since we got married in Halloween, we always remember when our anniversary is, and we always have a party already set up for it. So we got that going for us. Ah, what else? I don't think I have time. Uh, okay, that I've done. That I've done. Um, uh, I have to apologize on television to several of my nieces and nephews because we keep forgetting to buy you presents for your birthdays. So luckily you have other aunts and uncles <laughs> who, who seemingly actually love you in addition to us. Um, we once saw an American in pa Paris. It's a musical. It was up in San Francisco. It's already gone. You can't go see it. Uh, and there was too much ballet. There's too much ballet in this musical. Uh, and here's the other thing. I've been to see a number of musicals lately. It is surprising how many musicals suddenly they're surprise Nazis. Uh, like this was after World War II, so I guess there were no actual Nazis in it. But it, it, it was sad. It was sad. Um, uh, someone asked me... Hey, have you bought a 3D printer yet? No, I've not bought a 3D printer yet. Uh, so that's good. Uh, but I did buy a robot that draws things with like a very accurate mechanical arm uh, that can draw things, uh, just like, like a human arm, which is free, which could draw things. But this is, a, this is an expensive robot with an arm that you can use your arm to typey typey on a computer, and then the robot will draw things. Uh, it, now that I said it out loud, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but I, I have this robot in my house. I haven't even unpacked it yet because it's occurred to me I don't really actually need a robot to draw things. Like I, First of all, I don't draw now. Uh, I don't know why I thought buying a robot would help me draw. Um, but I'm, now I've got to make up some reason to have the robot. Otherwise, I'll be in trouble, I guess is what I'm saying. It's been, lo it's been lovely spending this evening with you. Um, I'll have two whole pieces of paper for the next show. Uh, I guess, for, for topics. Uh, we might tape in December. It might be January. Have a lovely rest of the year for everyone. Look, oh, fidget spinner, fidget spinner. See, see? There were three colors. Uh, they came in red. Uh, they came in blue. They came in black. Um, since they're cheap, some of them don't work. So if you came to our house and we gave you a fidget spinner and it doesn't work, just come back. Just ring the doorbell. Uh, and I'll dig around and give you another fidget spinner unless I've run out because I gave them to a lot of people at work and uh, gave them to the whole crew here and